It's good to be with you guys again, and thank the Lord for another opportunity to make another one of these videos. Uh, and shout out to my bro JR again for getting me started on these, and thank you so much all of you who uh, take use your time and attention to um, take in these videos however much of them you do consume. Going to be looking at the book of Genesis today, uh, the third chapter. Be talking about a unique topic, one that uh, really I don't know that I've ever heard a sermon about this e this topic either. But I want to focus on a certain <laughs> creature. I'm going to be talking about snakes in this video, and I'm going to be deriving most of this again, either ad libbing or quoting an article I posted on WordPress, which is where these videos have been coming from lately. But Genesis chapter 3, I'm going to look at the 14th and 15th verse to open up this video. What is the header of this article in, in WordPress? The title of the article is Crushing Snakes. Don't know that that'll be the title of this video, but, but uh, again, it's all about snakes today. All about Jesus, all about snakes. Genesis chapter 3, Word of God says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, and remember this is after the, the snake tempted Eve to eat the tree of the forbidden fruit, he lied to her, he contradicted the word of God, lied about God, slandered God, and convinced Eve that God was a liar, that God was holding out on her, that God didn't have her best in mind. And so he tempted her and basically was the catalyst that led to the fall of man being used of the enemy. And then God came in the garden. God found Eve and Adam naked. He clothed them. And then God confronts the snake. And that's where we pick it up here in the book of Genesis chapter 3. God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, speaking to the snake and speaking to Satan, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. That means the snake is the most cursed creature. <laughs> In the animal kingdom and above all creatures on planet earth. God told the snake, Upon thy belly shalt thou go. That means you're going to go from A to B, travel, commute on your stomach. And dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. <laughs> Think about how much most women hate snakes. And between thy seed and her seed, <clears throat> it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. <laughs> Jesus Christ, whether you know it or not, and I made this statement to open the article on WordPress, the Lord Jesus Christ is a world champion snake killer. That statement may offend some of you, may shock some of you, may anger some of you, those of you who call yourself snake lovers, nature lovers, whatever. Those of you who fight for the protection of what you believe to be an endangered species, those of you who love snakes and may even have some as your pets. And I apologize if, if that angers you, if, if, if you're so offended by that. But if you understood history, spiritual and historical reality as it regards God's case versus the snake. As it regards the curse of the snake and all such, you would understand the reality of the snake's status in creation and why it is exactly that God detests them and opposes them as He does through the power of His Son and His Spirit. Obviously, God did create the snake. They are still a creation of God. And yes, they still they still hold what, what appears you would believe to be a, a crucial function in the overall function of creation, what's commonly referred to as the ecosystem. Just because the snake is as cursed as they are, the most cursed creature on planet Earth, that doesn't mean that, the, that God doesn't still have a purpose for them. They still hold a... a a function in creation in what we call the ecosystem. 
And I understand that. I understand their position in the food chain, their, their function and creation and all that. And I sympathize with those of you, if, if you have some kind of a great affection for the snake, I sympathize with you. And, and I wish I could please you in what I'm about to say, because I know some of you, you just, just care for the snake or whatever, what have you. And I wish for your sake, or should I say snake, that things were different. And a lot of times when I'm preaching truth on things that, that, that I know contradict the passions and hobbies and, and interests of other people, sometimes I wish I could affirm what they love and what they want to do. I like when people are happy. I don't like upsetting people. I don't think anybody really does. Some Some people might. I wish I could say that it's okay to do some of the things that the Bible very clearly rebukes and defines as sin. But that would please some of you who enjoy those vices. I wish I could affirm and confirm some of your interests and hobbies and flavors and such that the Bible rebukes and commands against. It's not that I'm better than anybody, it's just that I have denied my own preferences as I do my best to follow truth with God's help. And I accepted God's offer to minister for Him in a particular capacity Regardless of what that capacity may be, wherever he may take me, the amount of people he leads me to speak to, whatever. Therefore, I am bound to present truth as it is written, regardless of whom it may offend, even me. There's some things the Bible says that offend the things that I guess I would prefer in my own flesh. But Paul said, I bring my flesh in sub subjection, and I've done my best with God's help by the power of the Holy Spirit to submit myself to what thus said the Lord, not what I would prefer. Instead of trying to twist scripture into my own perspective and my own flavor and taste, I'm doing my best with God's help. Not with my power, not by might, nor by power. Although I build up the inner man and do my best to deny the flesh. To, to mold my life in the way that God says is appropriate to live it. So regardless of who this may offend, and I apologize if it does offend you, but this is the truth of God's word. If you have some kind of a strange affection for these reptiles and then you absolutely adore them, I'm sorry for what I'm about to say, but this is the truth of the word. It's a strange topic, one one that uh, really doesn't seem all that significant because you're not going to go to hell if you love snakes. But just to show you that this, I'm more so presenting this truth to present a spiritual reality that can impact and affect all of us and the truth is as I read to you in the opening of this video as far as this topic of conversation is concerned snakes are the most cursed creatures on earth I'm sorry if you love them but they are cursed and eternally doomed the snake will not be featured in the new heaven and earth unless God recreates the initial model how they were before they look as they do now. Because the model of a snake that you see now is a cursed creature. Snakes, <laughs> whether you know it or not, we got a little, little buddy here. They used to walk around on four legs. They used to be beautiful creatures. They used to be able to talk. They didn't have, they were not cursed as they are now. I was actually watching a video a couple days ago with my sister and there's a man who, who is apparently a snake lover if I could call him that there's a man who is a snake lover and he um, was talking about facts about snakes and one of the things he said was genetically uh, the snake it appears there's there's and I don't know much about this but this is what I heard him say and I believe it especially according to scripture but he said there's two areas on a snake's body one nearer to their head slash neck area one down closer to the edge of their tail <laughs> and by the way the snake has just become one big tail basically God took that creature that was once beautiful and majestic and he turned them into the absolute tail they're nothing more than a tail crawling around on the ground but this man said he said there's there are two areas on a snake's body where they should be able to grow legs and he said for some reason they don't <laughs> and one area near the tail of the snake's body, it's become the area where the snake will now 
where the reproductive organ comes out, essentially. But he said in their genetics and in, in the design of their body, you would think that these two areas, there should be legs that come out of here. But he said they don't grow for some reason. It's like there's a malfunction in their DNA. And the dear man called it an evolutionary mystery. He said it's a mystery of evolution, how they have not evolved to grow legs. Well, I could answer that question right here out of the book of Genesis. Yes, they used to have legs. Yes, they should grow legs. The snake should. But God cursed them. God went into the, the figurative programming of his computer where he typed in and created the snake, their DNA, and he took out their legs because of this sin. Because when they were used by Satan, as I'm going to explain a little bit more, they lost rights and privileges to all that, all of that. Why are snakes so cursed? They are because, as I've explained, and I touched on this a little bit in the last video, they were the first of creation to give themselves to the devil. Before man, before Eve, before anything else, Satan found an ally in the snake. When God released Satan to, for a season to test his creation's loyalty, call it heaven's sting operation, Lucifer first gained and found an ally in the snake. The snake was the first of God's creation to betray its creator. The first to allow Satan to use its body as a vehicle to perform his evil deeds, and as many do now. And in case you don't know, just as the snake did, if you give yourself to the devil, if you give yourself to sin, the devil will use your body just as he used the body of the serpent to do evil. The snake was the first to sin and it was a calculated selection by the devil. He, he looked around creation. He thought, what can I use to get to man? Who is it that I can convince to give themselves to me? And he saw the snake. The snake had the perfect qualities for the work he was looking for, for the task at hand. Deceive man. The snake, the Bible said, was more subtle than any creature. More subtle. He possessed qualities, characteristics that matched what the devil was seeking. Intelligence, <laughs> cunning, persuasion, subtlety, crafty, creative, ability to disguise and deceive if need be, if the good gifts were applied in perversion. Skills that the devil looked for, he, and he does that today too. Like he'll look for individuals gifted in music, persuasive individuals that by which he can sway souls. Look at how he drafts individuals into his work now. He picked the snake, selected the snake based on its good characteristics that he sought to pervert. The snake was more subtle. And the snake gave itself to the devil and used its good gifts to deceive mankind. And thus God cursed them more than any creature. What was the curse? The curse can be essentially seen in red in the back of the book of Genesis chapter 3. I read to you in the beginning of this video. The essence of that curse was lose your beauty, eat dirt, and die. That was it. God, like I said, took the legs from the serpent. He said, on your belly you're going to crawl. He used to walk on four legs. And still should today Apparently, <laughs> it's an evolutionary mystery. No, it's a, it's a it's a a fact of sin and curse. God cursed them. Evolution, evolution. God bless you, those of you who believe it. God save your soul. God enlighten you. But evolution is a lie. With that, God scheduled and prophesied the doom of the snake. He said, "Eat dirt and die." <laughs> You are going to be lower than everybody else. You're going to crawl around in your stomach and you're not even going to have the right to walk. <clears throat> and then God promised the devil. He said, I'll put in between you and the woman. And you think about it. And women, the majority of women hate snakes. <laughs> God has put a, a hatred between women and snakes. I guess they must have used to have been friendly back in the day. But nowadays, mo the majority of women, some women absolutely adore snakes that I've seen normally there. Women who have passions in certain different, different areas. But the majority of women absolutely despise snakes. My mother was telling me a couple of days ago about how my grandmother used to hate snakes. 
said she'd try to kill everyone she saw. But God said, I'll put him into it between you and the woman. And then he said, her seed <laughs> will crush your head and you'll bruise his heel. And he was speaking of snakes. Remember, he was speaking to the snake, but he was speaking to Satan and the snake. So God told the snake, Jesus Christ is going to crush you. He told that to all snakes. And then he told the devil, the snake of all snakes, that, that the, the seed of the woman who is Jesus Christ... Because the woman has no seed but he who was born of a virgin. The seed is in man. The seed for the furtherance of creation is in man. Woman has had no seed but one seed and that was he who was born of a virgin. God gave Mary the seed and when the spirit moved upon her. And God said, her seed will crush your head with his heel and you'll bruise his heel. God prophesied the devil's demise. He prophesied the snake's demise. And guess what? That prophecy has been accomplished. We're yet to see the, the physical manifestation of it in, in totality. But it, is, it has been accomplished when, for when Jesus died on the cross. He defeated every snake and he defeated Satan himself. Of course, some of you probably don't accept or understand that reality. That snakes are cursed and crushed creatures who are an enemy to God and humanity. But the reality is snakes are cursed. And you can even see it in their appearance. They're hideous. They used to be gorgeous creatures. Now they're just absolutely the epitome. They embody what they are. Who they really are. They, they show it in their eyes. And their hideous design. Not their design, but what they have become. And snakes are not on the side of God. Whether you know it or not. Back when they're the fathers of the species... Gave themselves to the Lord of the Flies, Lucifer. Snakes at that moment joined Satan's team and they've been there ever since. They don't care for me or you, whether you realize it or not. These, these creatures are on the devil's side. And in their nature is a despite for God and a despite for Eve and Adam's children, their offspring. They don't care for you and me. God has a function for them. That's why He spared them on the ark. That's why He kept them here. There's still a purpose for them and He uses them Himself. <laughs> Think of Moses and his rod. God even uses the devil's little allies. Everything's in His hand. <laughs> Everything is in God's hand and He has the executive authority to use it as He will. But regardless, snakes are evil. They're cursed and they're on the devil's team. And they are the mascot of hell. They have become the mascot of hell. In essence, they represent hell. They're they're basically hell's mascot. Not all snakes are venomous. Many are, and appropriately so, showing the poison in them that was basically used to throw down man because through their tongue and their mouth, by figuratively biting Eve, the serpent was able to put a toxin in her that led her to be deceived from the promises and security of God. But all snakes, whether you know it or not, agree with it or not, they're evil. I'm sorry. God can use them. God still has a function for them, but they're evil. They're on Team Satan. And I think God could bring back the species in the end. The, the whole species are cursed. They're cursed. They're doomed. They're scheduled for extinction, ultimately. That's, don't, I don't care if they go extinct. Let them go extinct. They're evil. But the whole... the the, the Species as a whole, as it is now, is scheduled for extinction. They will not be featured in the new heaven and the new earth. There are no snakes in heaven, at least not as they appear now. Now, of course, God's initial design of the creature was gorgeous, as I stated, and it was perfect. So God could bring back that initial design. So there's hope for those of you who love snakes, but you'll see them as they truly appeared in the end. If you love snakes and love God and go to heaven, you'll probably see some there. I would imagine God would bring back the first design. But that's if it's in his judgment to do so. If he's if he's so if he has such an issue with the species now because of that one thing they did and he's chosen just to wipe them away because the blood of Jesus doesn't exactly redeem animals. There could be power in it for that. I believe there's power in the blood of Christ in the new covenant for our pets to even make it to heaven. And I pray to God that's true because because of how much we do love our pets and how much they mean to us. But regardless of what God chooses to do in the end, whether or not He brings back the initial design, 
through the initial mold and he still has perfect record of it. He's got a book in heaven where he has record of how he created everything and what he did to create it. And he could just do it by his word. He doesn't necessarily have to know all the ingredients. If he speaks it, it is so. But regardless of whether or not he brings it back or not, the reality is the fact is snakes are cursed. The truth is they're evil. They're cursed. And they embody that evil. Used to be gorgeous. Now they're hideous. They hiss. Where they used to be able to talk. They rattle. They crawl on their belly on all fours. They have joined Satan's side for the cause of Satan. And now they embody that. And they, they appear as Satan does in, the, in their hideous embodiment of the evil that they are and that they became. The devil, in case you don't know, he, he, he was the, just like the snake. At one time, he was the most beautiful creation, the most gorgeous creature of God. The highest angel, I believe, second to Christ in heaven's hierarchy of power and promotion. But now Satan, his, his beauty, although there's still traces of it there, and if he dresses the right way, it can still somewhat be displayed. He literally, I mean, I don't know if you've said, I don't, know much about the movie but the movie Star Wars where they have that the villain the master villain whoever it is who Darth Vader answers to who has that face where he just it's it looks like he's got some kind of a sick disease that's somewhat what the devil looks like at least I've I've, I've glimpses of him twice I've had glimpses of him twice I saw Satan one time he was clothed in a a white garment with a black like a black strip going down each shoulder he had a, a hat, a crown on that looked like the crown of a pharaoh, and he looked stunning in that in that uh, time that I saw him. And he had black eyeliner that went up his eyes like this, and he was wearing what appeared to be some kind of cosmetics that concealed what has become of his flesh to hide what has happened to an individual who is now cursed and who embodies that curse. Another time I saw him, he was wearing a red like a red hooded garment that that concealed his face and shadowed basically his physical appearance to hide what was not concealed by any kind of makeup or whatever what have you but that's kind of the same deal when it comes to the serpent they they once were gorgeous once were glorious now they they appear as they actually are and they, they embody the curse rather than the blessings that they once had. And that's about the same thing with Satan. I remember years ago there was a county nearby to the county that I happened to reside in that was they were looking to install a highway. <laughs> a highway to bypass over some hills and bypass a little village. This particular county was looking to install a highway bypass over some hilly terrain. What was at that time not not uh, not able to be traversed. And at the announcement of their plans to do so, there were some individuals who who just had a fit. I mean, they freaked out and began to protest in the city halls and in the highways, if I'm, if I'm remembering it all correctly. Because the highway that the county was looking to build was being built in the direct path, the direct presumed path, estimated path of a certain snake's anticipated path of migration. So if the construction went forward and continued as scheduled, that highway would turn into a presumed graveyard, that's what they thought, of a certain breed of snake. <laughs> For apparently they crossed that certain area, or they were esteemed to cross that certain area or estimated to cross that certain area. Therefore, this, this announcement to go ahead with this construction, this project, of many dear souls protested and, and just threw a fit, and, and they were actually able to delay the construction of that highway for months, I believe, until an underground tunnel was installed. They reached a compromise with the contractors and the, the, the city and everybody else. And they had to, in order to continue with the construction of the highway, they had to first dig a tunnel underneath where they were going to put the highway to allow for the snake to have an avenue to cross 
without risk cross that path of land without risk of dying think about also some of the laws we have that protect some of these hideous venomous snakes in our governing bodies they give more rights to snakes than they do to, to babies in the mother's womb in some areas of this country and world now I don't want to speak evil of those souls I know they think in their minds they're doing something great for the world and for what they seem to be or see to be a harmless creature in the snake but which isn't true but I still wish they knew what and who it was that they were fighting for Again, I understand the general function of the snake, as I said, and I'm not for their their overall extinction. Not yet. <laughs> but I just wish the people who passionately love them and were fighting so hard for snakes would actually take that energy and passion and apply it somewhere where it's more profitable for mankind and for this world. Because the reality is they're, they're fighting for hell's mascot, hell's ally, first ally hell's reptile the most cursed creature on planet earth and one that if it had the opportunity and ability would kill the very ones who fight for their rights for supposed rights my personal policy is if it's a threat to you and your family if you see a venomous snake anywhere around you your children your wife your mother your father kill it get rid of it I don't care if they're endangered. You're in more danger by allowing a venomous snake to hang around you and your family. Those laws are absurd. Don't dig a tunnel for a poisonous snake. Dig a grave. Kill them before they try to kill you and let the harmless ones of them, the ones that aren't venomous, live to eat the rats and keep the ecosystem going. Besides the natural curse and evil of the snake, the reality is in the spiritual realm, this world is crawling with evil, wicked, venomous snakes. They're all around us. And just as in the natural realm, so it is in the spiritual realm, unbelievably so. Just like there are individuals who are fighting for the rights of snakes, fighting to protect snakes in the spiritual realm rather than building our lives above and over the annoying threats to our spiritual life this is why I'm talking about snakes right here rather than exterminating the venomous serpents from hell we build them tunnels that they may exist above and around us and we are aid to a threat to our spiritual health and our spiritual life We refuse to exterminate them, for we fear lest that which is a threat to us may go extinct. That might sound a little radical to some, but I'm speaking of spiritual truth. The Word of God says, give no place to the devil. Don't tolerate him anywhere around you. Don't let that serpent even talk to you in the garden. God does not tolerate the presence of the devil. God tells us not to give any place to him. Further, the Word of God says that God shall bruise Satan under our feet shortly. If God tolerates the presence of the enemy around us, if He allows him in as Job, it's only to prove us and to test us. But our policy is to be as God's. We're not to play games with the devil. We're not to tolerate His presence among us. If we see that threat, that those venomous vipers and pythons of hell hanging around our spiritual life, we are to crush and exterminate them in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Remember the passage in Genesis chapter 3. Look at how God dealt with the snake in the garden. He tolerated His presence to test. But once God understood what happened, and He knew before the foundation of the world, once God understood that the serpent was used by Satan to to essentially bite man with a venomous toxin of temptation by which they fell, God did not deal with it lightly or patiently. In case you don't know, God is not a procrastinator. (laughs) God doesn't wait for a better time and a better season. God is patient. God's timing is perfect, and sometimes we may think He's waiting, but really, he's, He's just got the perfect time in mind. 
You wait upon the Lord, I wait upon the Lord. God deals with things before the fact. <laughs> he doesn't even let the time dwindle near, near to zero. But when God recognized just who it was and what it was that, that it's brought sin upon this world and all evil, God didn't dig a tunnel for the snake to escape and keep living in that state. Even though, as I stated, He did not exterminate them. But God swiftly and appropriately dealt with the situation. In other words, He went for a shovel and He laced up His boots. He immediately scheduled the demise of the problem, the curse of death, the sin and curse of sin and Satan. And He dealt with the snake immediately who caused the problem. I have my doubts that that first snake got away. <laughs> if he did, he was he was sliming away on his stomach. But knowing God, I'll bet he chopped the head of that first traitor snake off. While he prophesied and dealt with the whole problem futuristically, he dealt with it immediately and then futuristically with prophecy. God announced the doom of the, the species and he whom the species gave themselves to, Satan. Then God dispensed to the very first snake. And God dispensed of Satan through prophecy. God issued the curse immediately. What am I saying here? I'm saying crush the snakes. Get rid of those threats to your spiritual health and your spiritual life in and around you. And you may have to do so on a daily basis. I have to myself every day in prayer. I crush snakes. I'm not telling you here to go on a literal <laughs> snake killing rampage. Don't go around hunting snakes and killing them. Unless they come to you, near you, and threaten you, your life, your family. Leave them alone. Just let them go out there and hiss and do their stupid things that they do in the wild. Let the, let the wildlife rangers think they're actually doing something good by protecting snakes. A predatory creature who threatens you. I'm not telling you to literally go hunt snakes. If you see them literally, they threaten you, pray to God and kill them as prey. What I'm saying though is spiritual. I'm telling you when you see the snakes of hell in the spiritual realm, don't tolerate them. Treat them as God did. Kill them in Jesus' name. Because you have the authority, the executive authority and executive right to do so. Because Jesus Christ, the King, crushed the head of the snake when He died on this cross. In His earthly ministry, Jesus was on a snake-killing crusade. He crushed every snake known to earth. As there are many kinds of serpents naturally, so it is spiritually. Jesus crushed the snakes of pride, of religion, of sickness and death, of temptation, of hypocrisy, of lies and rumors and all. He crushed every snake <laughs> and the snake with his heel with his heel with with flair with with style <laughs> the heel <laughs> with authority with, with with his foot god said you'll bruise his heel he'll crush your head with his heel that meant that, that jesus is going to do it with style that meant jesus is going to do it with force and then also by you, you're going to bruise his heel. That means that his suffering, in compared to what you're going to go through, he's going to crush your head, you're going to bruise his heel. His suffering will be a bruised heel in compare to a crushed head that you will endure. Satan has a fatal wound. Jesus Christ endured a fatal, not a fatal wound, but a wound that he recovered of in three days, physically speaking. Jesus bruised his heel in the power and suffering in which he crushed the serpents. But he crushed his head, their head in doing so. A bruised heel. That resembles how minor Jesus' awful sufferings were in compared to Satan's defeat. And how powerfully Jesus stomped the devil into the dirt with such force and impact that it bruised his heel <laughs> with nail scars. Victory, power, the devil is defeated. How do we identify the spiritual snakes around us? It's simple. Very simple. Anything and everything that comes against or contradicts God's holy word as in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3. Call that a snake. Identify that as a snake. 
The devil is a liar. I don't care if it says it's your friend, if it feels good, if it makes you feel good, if it contradicts the word of God. It's a snake that you must not converse with, communicate with, tolerate around you. But you must exterminate and get rid of immediately. Because if you tolerate it around you, eventually you'll listen to what it says and you'll succumb to it and it will bite you and inject you with its toxic venom. If it contradicts the Bible, stamp it out with your heel by the power of Jesus' name through the power of the Holy Spirit. Do not tolerate the devil to exist around you. If you do, he may bite you and inject his deadly toxin into your spiritual veins, into your heart. Your heart may be hardened, will cause you to drift in unbelief away from God, may cause you to depart from the living God. That is possible. And if you tolerate Satan and sin around you, the likelihood of that happening, the, the environment you have created that is hab habitable to, to Satan's venomous allies, the likelihood of you drifting into unbelief and hardness is very, very likely. God has given us the power, the authority to tread on serpents. Jesus said that in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. If we put on the shoes of the Holy Spirit, the boots of the gospel of peace, our feet will be equipped and enabled to stamp out and stomp out every enemy that God has put under our feet. If we take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, we'll be able to chop the head off of every serpent that lay in our path and stand before us. Lift up your eyes. Every evil has been put below you. The Bible, he's under your feet, folks. The devil is under your feet. I've got the devil under my feet. He stands tall. He talks loud. He intimidates. But Jesus Christ defeated him on the cross by his blood. And Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. I've got the devil under my feet. You can stamp the devil out. Don't tolerate him around you. Crush the head of the devil in Jesus' mighty name. You have the power. If you so happen to have tolerated the devil around you, if you built him a highway and a tunnel to exist rather than eliminating the threat that he is to you, if for some reason or another you've allowed the devil to exist around you and he has bitten you, the venom of sin is in your heart and it's working death in you. The good news is there is a balm in Gilead and there is healing for you. There is a spiritual anti-venom and anti-dope for every soul who has been pricked by the evil one. And just as it is the, the poison that defeats the enemy, the blood of Jesus Christ, so it is the healing medication that heals those who have been poisoned by the enemy. When the children of Israel sinned against God and were spiritually bitten by hell's fiery serpents, God illustrated that reality to them in the natural. You may remember this story. It happened in the book of Numbers. Israel in the wilderness, they murmured against God. Complained against God. And so God, spiritually as they were being bitten by the devil's evil, their hearts being hardened and they were departing in unbelief from the living God. Again, that's a reality. You can depart in unbelief. That's the only way you can depart in unbelief. But you can depart the faith in unbelief. And then when you believe the serpent. But God sent venomous snakes in them as judgment and to reveal to them what was going on in the spirit. Even from Edom. Even from the Garden of Eden. For hell yet used the serpent to tempt man and yet does today. And Israel was pierced by the spiritual snakes. So God sent literal snakes in there as a, as a means of vengeance and to reveal to them what was going on in the spirit. And those fiery serpents, if you remember the story, they were biting the children of Israel. They were, they were sick, they were poisoned, and they were dying. Many of them were dying. So they began to cry out to God for mercy. God, have mercy on us. God, forgive us for complaining against you. God, give us a solution. Moses cried to God for mercy. And if you know the story, you know God told Moses, build a serpent of brass. Forge and mold a serpent of brass. Make a, make a snake like a statue. Like a trophy. Make a trophy snake. 
Put it on a pole. Put it on a pole that, that, that every eye can see. And then put that pole in the ground or hold it up. And tell everybody to look at that pole who's been bitten by a snake. By a venomous snake. And God said, all who look at that pole, if they look at it, they shall be healed. And so Moses bu built, forged, and crafted. I don't know if he did it himself. He probably got good old Aaron to do it. We know he was good at, good at silver work or whatever. Good with metals. So they went to the fire, they melted some, some things down and formed an image, a brass, in the type and in the, the figure of a snake. And this is incidentally where the medical field will get. If you look at their their um, the symbol for, for a lot of medical institutions, you'll see a snake around a pole. This is where they get it, the book of numbers, because they're essentially saying we are trying our best to be a cure for the many things that harm you in this world but, but, but Moses put a serpent on a pole and he held it up and the Bible said that, that all who looked upon it <laughs> were healed and for those of you who have been bitten by the same evil ally of hell spiritually speaking that are yet functioning yet tempting in the spirit realm the snakes of hell if you've been bitten by them and you have been infected with their toxin that is your solution, the snake on the pole. And what that really means is the blood of Jesus Christ. All of humanity, if we're, if we're honest, has been snake bitten. We're all, the Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we have the curse of sin in us from, our, from those who were initially figuratively snake bitten to eat the apple, to eat the forbidden fruit. But the solution is, is the snake on a pole, and that's a representative of Jesus' cross. Because on the cross, God revisited the issue by His prophetic promise, and He eliminated the source and overcame the serpent. And if you look on the cross by faith, you are healed. You will be healed. When Jesus hung on the cross, He was not dying so much as the serpent and His venomous power over man was dying. When Jesus died, all of hell died. He crushed their head with His bruised heel. Jesus crushed the snakes. <laughs> the snake now hangs dead on the vacated cross, for he broke the power of canceled sin. And when I tell you to look at the cross in faith, I'm not telling you to look at a at a tree trunk or whatever it was, a two by four, a piece of wood. As Pastor Jerry said the other night, I heard him say the other night when he was preaching. Nobody who tells you to keep faith in the cross if they're pre preaching the truth are telling you to put faith in a piece of wood. They're telling you to put faith in the victory and the defeat of the enemy where it was accomplished. The blood of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says through faith in His blood. Romans chapter 3. Your faith should be in the blood of Christ and in His victory, which was Calvary, revealed on the third day. But now the snake, in essence, is dead on the, on the pole rather than the Son of God. Because the Son of God overcame by His blood. The cross has been vacated. Now the wall is satisfied. Hell has no more legal hold over man. They cannot no more pervert law. They cannot perform injustice in the appearance of justice. Jesus conquered. Jesus won. It is finished. We live by only looking by faith to His cross. We, in, we win by exercising the victory of His cross. If you've been bitten by the snakes of hell, you can be healed now if you just look. If you just look to Calvary by faith. God will heal you. God will take that sin, the venom of sin out of your life and put His Spirit in you. And then after He puts His Spirit in you, if you're baptized with the Holy Spirit and then use the power of the name of Jesus over every serpent of hell that will come against you. They'll come. I mean, He'll send them spiritually. There'll be pythons. There'll be vipers. They're every kind. <laughs> he'll send them all against you to try to get your faith. But you can be victorious over all of them. And you will show an evidence of fight many times. It'll be more than evidence you've been through something. But it's not over till it's over. 
and you can put on your spiritual Holy Ghost boots and use your heel to crush the enemy. You can pick up your spiritual shovel, that is the word, that is the sword of the Spirit, and you can chop their head off. <laughs> Exercise the power of the cross over every demon spirit of hell. Do not tolerate the devil around you. Don't keep him as a pet. Kill the devil that is a threat around you in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 3, watch these digits here, chapter 3, verse 14 through 15, same exact numerals as we saw in the book of Genesis. That's intentional. Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus was lifted up that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you. God died for you. I'm sorry if you love snakes. It's just a fact. The fact is they are cursed. And they are on the devil's side. They are on the devil's team. But we've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. And we must not tolerate the devil around us. The Bible says, give not place to the devil. There's a song that says this. It's uh, performed by Crowder. The first verse says, we're not afraid. <laughs> Terrors, terrors of night, arrows that fly by day. Ten thousand may fall, but we will remain. Second verse says, we're not afraid. <laughs> A promise of God can never be torn away. Walking on hands of angels, crushing snakes. Safe under the shadow of His wings. Our fortress and our strength, our fortress. And then the chorus says, we're taking back our freedom. Our battle has been won. We have been liberated. Back from the dead we have come. We're taking back our freedom. Our battle has been won. We've been liberated. Back from the dead we have come. The bridge says this, Do you see Him, King of Heaven, Champion of all creation, Eyes of fire, voice of thunder, tearing through the sky in wonder. Dressed in light, we see him coming on a horse that's white like lightning. <laughs> Do you see him? Do you see him? King of heaven, champion of all creation. We're taking back our freedom. Our battle has been won. We've been liberated. Back from the dead, we've come. Walking on hands of angels, crushing snakes, crushing snakes, crushing snakes. Don't tolerate Satan in and around you. Exterminate him in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your heel against him. Crush him in the name of Jesus Christ. Crush him in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go back to the issue. It was a snake in the garden. Let's go back to the source of where these things began for us. The enemy of our soul. We're not going to tolerate you, devil. We've got power over you. Every snake of pride, of lust, of sin, of adultery, fornication, homosexuality, transgenderism, Political correctness says, let it exist among us to please them. God says, give no place to the devil. No, we're not, we're not going to tolerate it. We cannot afford to tolerate it. Not because we hate, but because it will destroy us and kill us. It's venomous. Let's look to the cross. Christ has overcome. Christ has won. 
Jesus' victor. And let's exercise the power and authority we have. We have power to tread over serpents in Jesus' name. We're taking back our freedom. Don't you let the devil exist around you. Don't you let the world indoctrinate your children with its filth. Don't you let those snakes bite your children. Don't let them around you. Political correctness is a quick trip to the grave, man. I'm all for love. And like I said, I wish I could say things that please you, that make you happy with me, whatever. Some truths are hard to speak. This one is, is unique, is uniquely difficult. But friend, the, the point is, is simple. Don't tolerate the snakes. <laughs> They have a team around here. They're called the, uh, the the minor league baseball team. They call them the Copperheads. Their mascot's a venomous snake, and they have a. And I'm not, whatever. You can have whatever mascot you want. I'm not saying that's wrong. I don't care what you do. I wouldn't have a mascot that's a snake. That's hell's mascot. But they have this event they call swimming with the snakes, and one of the ways they they drum up publicity in the community to try to promote their team and try to. You know, drum up public interest and bring people to the games from the local area. Is they'll have an event at the local community swimming pool where they'll have their players go out there, sign autographs, stuff like that. And, you know, gets the youth interested and, and gets some of the families in the community familiar with some of the individuals that represent that, that ball club. And that's what a lot of you guys are doing, though, to take that terminology away from their innocent event. Not that that's wrong, that they're doing it something that's completely harmless and innocent just to get to know people but I think a lot of us have been swimming with snakes and we've been digging tunnels for snakes and trying to tolerate snakes and make a place for them among us where they must not be allowed to exist doctrines of devils we're taking back our freedom we're crushing snakes God, don't help me not to tolerate the enemy amongst me and around me. Don't let me let the devil around me because he seems harmless. Even though I know he's saying the wrong things, he's just an innocent snake. <laughs> that snake can cost you everything. We're taking back our freedom. We're crushing snakes. We have tolerated the devil's existence in, around us far too long in this world in this country in our public schools just, just let them have their way let them have a place we've got room for these satanic doctrines God says give no place to the devil look what happened to Eve when she gave place to the devil look what happened to this, this snake don't give the devil what God's given you your gifts as a snake Reserve yourself for God and stand for Him by the power of your spirit. And if you are bitten by the snake, even in Christ, remember there is an antidote and you cannot exhaust the unmerited favor of God. We don't win God's approval through our performance. God's not standing here waiting for us to act a certain way and do certain things that please Him via our performance. No, God's not grading us, folks. There are consequences sometimes to actions, but God's not waiting for you to act a certain way for Him to give you something. He gave you all spiritual blessings in Christ. Freely. Regardless of how you act, regardless of what you do, unmerited favor. The world says you are hindering God from blessing you. No, nothing can hinder you. Nothing. Nothing can separate you. It's not about what you do, it's just about your faith. Look and live <laughs> that's the rule if the snake bites you in Christ you have a bad day look and live God's not going to take anything from you you keep faith now if you depart in unbelief you can depart from the living God but God's not grading you and saying okay he did that I'm not going to give him the blessings in Christ forget it we'll wait and see if he does better tomorrow no that ain't God brother his mercies are new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Unmerited favor. Pour it on me, Lord. I, Lord, I had a bad day. 
but Jesus covers me. Lord, that snake uh, led him around me today. <laughs> he might have nipped at my ankle. He might have bit me in the shin. But Father, your son was perfect. Your son did what I cannot do. Jesus, cover me. And then God says, unmerited favor be upon you. It's not about what you do. It's about what my son did. The only thing I care about as far as you are concerned is your faith. And you've got faith. You've got it all. Take of the provision of the new covenant. It's yours. Un. Merited. You you can't your performer you cannot keep <laughs> you cannot tie God's hands but by your unbelief. It's not about our performance, it's about Jesus' performance. God's not sitting back with a notepad and notebook watching every little thing we do and saying, Oh, he did that. Now we're gonna have to reschedule him. Nope. <laughs> it's now. Now is the day of salvation. You got it all now. Put faith in Jesus. Keep faith in Jesus. That's all God looks for. Your performance, the Bible says our righteousness is filthy rags. Even if you have a good day, even if you do good, it does not impress God. I've got bad news for you. Some of you, you go give to the poor. You do these things and you'll feel good about yourself inside and you should. You should have a good feeling because you did good. But guess what? You'll think in that that God feels good about me now. God's pleased about me. So God, this is, this is the mistake I made years ago. I used to fast and pray and think, man, God is pleased with me and I'm doing better than others. That's not how it works. Even if you do right, God said through the prophet, it's filthy rags. The only thing that counts is Jesus Christ and His flawless performance as man, vicariously living for us to please the Father because everything we do in our living displeases the Father. Even if it's right, I promise you in some way it will offend God because it's imperfect. Jesus was perfect. Man needs you to please Him for Him to give you something. God needed His Son to please Him for Him to give you everything. There's one man who pleased God. That's Christ. We need to start... We need to be educated in the matter of merit. Yes, the things we do matter. (laughs) But not as far as pleasing God. The Bible said without faith, it's impossible to please Him. The only thing that you and I can do to please God is our faith. Crush the snakes. Crush those snakes and crush them by faith. God loves you. God died for you. It's not about what you do. It's about what He did. Look and live. Stop looking at your brother or sister. Stop grading their performance. Stop grading your own performance. Don't tolerate that snake of self-righteousness around you. Let's just all look look to Him. <laughs> We're all snake bitten, man. Look and live. Look and live. Crush the snakes in Jesus' name. We're tolerating the devil around us in every avenue of life. Get rid of them. Get rid of them off your cell phone. <laughs> don't go on those social media sites. Don't, don't view those things on those social media sites. Stop sending inappropriate pictures. I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm just trying to help you stay away from the things that will bite you in the spirit to where you'll need to look again. And we must ever look. Look and live. Look and live. Give no place to the devil. Crush his head in the name of Jesus. And if you do cut his head off, bury it. (laughs) Because sometimes even though you cut his head off, he can still bite you. There's snakes that can do that. So can the devil. To be frank, that's what he's been doing for 2,000 years now. Jesus Christ chopped his head off and he's still still biting at us a little bit. But it's all about Jesus. If you've hung in for this video for for the hour, I I pray that you've received something of this. I pray that you can understand a little bit more about what I was speaking of today. God loves you. God died for you. Give your heart and life to Jesus. Give Him everything and put your faith in Him and keep that faith there. He loves you. The devil is defeated. (laughs) I'm sorry if you like snakes. They're cursed. They're evil. They're on the devil's team. And they're about to go down forever. They are cursed. They are cursed. But Jesus Christ crushed them all on the cross. We have won. It is finished. We are victorious. Put your faith in Him. Put your faith in Him to have that victory. 